Hey there, CPO here. Uh, so, parts have been rolling in for my heli. I'm very excited to get started, uh, but I uh, also want to spend the time to do things right, and I don't have a lot of time to uh, to spend all at once uh, building just because of my schedule. So hopefully this weekend I'll get to spend more time. Uh, but for now, I want to take a quick moment to talk to you about the uh, the servos that I got for the Cyclic. Um, so these are um, the Turnagees S306G. Um, here's the box for it. This is the high voltage version. Uh, and the reason I got these uh, isn't because I plan on running a high voltage setup, but it just so happens that um, there was a seller on one of the forums who had some of these that uh, I think was uh, a fair price that we were able to work out. And uh, so I bought them. And the reality of it is the specifications between the high voltage and the standard voltage versions are the same with the exception of the additional 8.4 volts uh, ratings. But the 4 volts, uh, or 4.8 volts, and the 6 volt uh, specifications were exactly the same between the two. So um, I didn't mind going the high voltage route, even though I don't plan on using it. Now, these servos uh, have been getting uh, fairly uh, good reviews uh, from users uh, who have installed them. Uh, they've often been compared uh, to the Align uh, similar version servos. Uh, you know, do a search for the uh, S306G and you'll see all kinds of, of uh, videos. And uh, there was one guy that did a video testing against an Align and talking about uh, you know how quick the servo reactions were, how how uh, how it returned to center, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway. I got them because uh, I realized that they were good servos at a at a good price. Um, they are um, metal geared servos, and they are in a metal housing, uh, some, a little aluminum housing here. So it's a very thin, lightweight, almost almost plasticky feeling, just because it's so light and and uh, you know lightweight. But um, it is a, a probably a very low grade aluminum. I'm not going to suggest that that it's anything fancy. Uh, but my thought is that maybe it might be a little bit more durable um, of a servo uh, body. So, so one of the challenges with these is that um, because it has the the uh, the metal frame, is that um, apparently when they're manufactured, there's a circuit board in here that will sometimes hit against the base of the servo and cause shorts. So that's a very common problem with these. So what I'd like to do is address that real quick while I have just a minute and uh, and talk about that. The other thing I want to make sure I do is um, these are metal screws into a metal housing and uh, I want to make sure just like on other heli parts that these are thread locked appropriately. Um, there's not a whole lot of torque holding these screws in. As a matter of fact from the factory they come uh, very loose. Uh, and they're just these uh, long screws here. So I'm going to pull these four screws out. And I'm just using a uh, little precision uh, screwdriver set. These are super tiny screws, like eyeglass size screws here. All right, so they're out. The other thing uh, that I, I know about these is that this little label here is actually stuck between the, uh, the two pieces of the aluminum, which kind of hold them together and stick them. You can pull it out, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove these and I'll show you why. Uh, because underneath that is uh, is a hole or a cutout in the metal to allow for the motor uh, to be centered there and uh, and to keep it pretty thin. So I'm going to just pull these off. I don't necessarily need the uh, Turnagy name brand on there. I didn't spend enough to do product advertisement anyway. So I'm going to pull that off. 
It's that way on both sides, so kind of interesting. Once you have those off, the thing comes apart pretty easy. And as you can see, there's basically uh, a metal housing and a circuit board that are in pretty close proximity on top of each other. Hence uh, the problem with shorting out. So I'll show you how I chose to address this problem. There are probably um, other ways. Um, and as, uh, as with anything, there's many ways to solve the same problem. So I'll show you how I solved it uh, in just a sec. All right, so how I chose to solve this problem is uh, with black electrical tape. Uh, and I'm gonna show you what my process uh, to do this is. I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape um, and cut it, you know, a little bit longer than the actual servo uh, width. And I'm just going to stick it on the bottom of my, uh, the servo base here. So let me zoom so you can see that. I just stuck it to the bottom. Now that seems kind of strange because I want tape on the inside, not the outside, but I'll show you why I did that here. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is just use it as a pattern to trace around with an X-Acto knife. Being very careful, this is very soft um, aluminum, so you could actually, you could actually cut the aluminum uh, if you're not careful. But I'm just going to use it to just gently and lightly trace around, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just is a good guide to get a good size without a lot of trial and error. So once I do that, I can uh, pull off what's around the stuff, the extra stuff that I'm cutting off. And you can see how it's not very perfect, but that's okay because uh, it's not going to stay there for very long. Bring you in closer here. So what I'm going to do is pull this off, and now I have a piece of tape that is about the same size as the base of my uh, servo, and a little bit bigger than the actual circuit board that I want to protect. So what I'm going to do is just set this centered on top of that circuit board. So basically that I've got tape um, on all four sides protruding just a little bit beyond it, okay? So that's gonna protect anything uh, on the circuit board from touching the, uh, the aluminum base. And then, this is where it gets really easy, is I just put the base back on. Now you gotta make sure you line this up right because you've gotta trap uh, these uh, wires in here. It's gonna fit a little bit snugger than it did when you took it off because now you've got a little bit of resistance from the tape that's, uh, that's on there, uh, which is good. Now when you push it down, it actually folds over the edges of that tape uh, and wraps it around just a touch. So once you push it on, uh, it is good to go. And basically, um, there is now a layer of electrical tape between the circuit board and the, the metal on the base of the servo. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, put the screws back in. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, these are metal screws and a metal base. So like all good heli builders, you should use some thread locker. Uh, in this case, it's really easy because these screws are so long, I just literally like dip them inside. I just run them inside that thread lock bottle. Uh, and then I will make sure everything is where I want it. Slip it through. Tighten it down. I'm fearful of making these too tight because I know this is probably pretty cheap aluminum, so I'm getting it just snug. With the thread locker though, um, there's gonna be uh, some good protection there against those backing out. Add another uh, thread lock screw.
And uh, just as a matter of habit, I tend to do things in star patterns to make sure that they're torqued um, evenly. So you'll see I'm kind of doing the crisscross pattern, kind of like you do on a uh, on an automobile tire when you change it or tighten it up. And one more to go. It just takes a little bit of thread lock. You can see just by running it through, um, I get just a little bit on the threads. Okay, so now that's back together. I have a nice and shielded, uh, protected circuit board, but I still have these huge holes on the side, right? Uh, from where there was before a sticker. I'm not so sure this sticker was the best thing to, uh, uh, to cover up all the electronics in this thing. So um, I could put the sticker back on. Uh, like I said, I didn't pay enough for these uh, to do brand advertisement, um, and certainly they're not paying me. So uh, what I'm just gonna do is take a, another piece of electrical tape, and it just so happens to be the right dimensions to lay across here. Give it a little bit of tension. May have actually made this a little bit long. So I'll just Trim it a little more. And there you go. So this is a shielded and now uh, somewhat um, protected uh, servo. And the good news is I can now tell which ones I've worked on and which ones I haven't because uh, if they've got black tape on them, uh, I've already worked on them. Uh, so now I've got two of these that have been done. Oops and uh, two more to go. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have any other ideas, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, but I thought this was a good, easy way to, uh, to get that problem solved and make for a reliable uh, servo. And I you know, can't wait to try these. Um, I don't have anything to compare them to. These are, <laughs> these are my first servos uh, that I've ever bought. So um, I'm sure I'll know if they suck um, but I won't be able to tell you if they're better than anybody else's servos. Um, but if I can figure it out as a beginner, then heck, uh, that must be pretty good. So anyway, uh, appreciate you watching and uh, catch you on the next video.